the, chip, the, the, the challenge is how do we digitize that and make that accessible to the students? I don't want you to recreate the wheel. Okay? Go back to the PowerPoint. You know, take one class, go back to the PowerPoint through Google Doc, the Google Presenter piece that I'm using. You can upload those PowerPoints. You don't even have to change anything. Yes, some of the formatting will be funky. Uh, you know, things will work and not work, but at least start there. Okay, so we're, we're taking the content that you currently have, digitizing it, putting it out there. Okay, what I'd also like to suggest, other than just digitizing stuff, so as you create new classes, as you create new teaching and learning materials, how do I start with a digital copy first? Like, how do I start with the digital first and, and create it so that it's accessible? And yes, it might be just taking that PowerPoint and uploading it to Blackboard. Okay, but what other things can we do? There's also two things that I think we, we need to be able to, to do in our classes. Um, a couple of years ago, we would do talks. You know, Greg and I would do a talk, and we would say, it would be nice if you could create screen captures and screencasts for your students. Now we're at the stage where I think that every one of us needs to be able to create screen captures and screencasts. This is mandatory. Okay, so students I have coming out of uh, our pre-service program, our teacher ed program, this is what we build in. They need to be experts in it, and I think that this is a skill that we need to have because this goes back to that Khan Academy question from before. So I create a lot of screen captures. So screen capture is a still image that you are taking from your computer screen. You can annotate it and mark it up if you so choose. Okay? You're creating a picture. One tool that I use is called Sketch. Okay, Skitch is a free program. There's lots of great tools out there. There's lots of great products out there. Skitch, I come back to again and again. Skitch is now, it's S-K-I-T-C-H. Skitch is a program that uh, is, Evernote bought it a couple of years ago. Um, yes, there is talk about Evernote deprecating it, but for right now it works and it works really well. Only on a Mac? Uh, works on a Mac, works on PC. I'm on a Mac now, that's why it says it's up there. Also works on tablets, works on the iPad, works on your iPhone. I'll show you how I use Sketch. Okay, so I have it installed here. So what Sketch will do is I have uh, I can pull screen captures, I can take pictures of stuff on my screen, and most importantly, I can annotate that or mark it up. Okay, so if you are looking at a web page, um, if you're trying to direct people to a, a certain area, so here's an example. I had a couple of blog posts recently on how to uh, go in and create, uh, get images from the internet and add them to blog posts. So I had students that were blogging, and instead of me going through again and again and again how to find an image and use it, I did a bunch of screen captures and gave it to them. So here's an example of. Technology is overrated. Just kidding. It never works when you want it. It never works. Just go to your blog post. There we go. So this is an example. I went on to Flickr. I took a, there we go. Uh, I took a screenshot of, I want to use the last one. I took a screen capture. Uh, took a screen capture, took a picture of what's happening on my screen, and I mark it up, telling the students what the individual elements are and what they do. So I'm basically taking a, a snapshot of what's happening on my screen. This is how we do it. So I will go to, we can take this page here. So what will happen is I'm in Sketch now. It's free. It will save my stuff to Evernote. I can hit screen snap, and then I have a little target. Okay, I basically click and drag. I do this with like a JPEG or a... Yep. So I'm going to click and drag. I typically don't, you can get in here and mess with the options and stuff like that. I ignore it at this point. I will click capture, and then it pulls over the capture to me. If I wanted to, I could just move this over and use it. I prefer to annotate and mark these up, but it, it depends on my purpose, depends on what I want to do. So the reason why I love Sketch is because it makes it very easy to use some of these pieces. So I'm going to click on this 
and say uh, click here. I'm going to add a little arrow. Mm -hmm. I can add, I can change the color, I can change the font. Um, one other thing that I really love about Sketch, especially for researchers, is this, um, if you ever need to make information de-identifiable or obfuscate uh, participants <laughs> in research as a pixelator, okay? So if you have students or you have a, a classroom or you have research, you can obfuscate their images, their pictures. Um, you can add little, uh, pop marks and stuff like that. But then the nice thing is now I can take this and I can click and drag it to my desktop, save it as a PNG file, save it as a JPEG, whatever I want. And now here on my computer screen, I've got an image. Okay, So your image could be anything. Whatever is on your screen and you want it to uh, describe to students. This is a screen capture. You mark it up, you annotate it, you got an image. Yes, you could put that image into a Word doc and print it out and make photocopies. You can do that. But then we can also add it into your online discussion forums. You can add it to a website, a blog post. You can add that wherever it is that you need. Okay. So you start to think about, okay, think about some of the uh, little tasks that we frequently have to ask our students to do or our colleagues. You know, I, I would ask students, okay, go sign up for an account at Skitch. And it's like, okay, go to the top right corner of the screen, click on the button that looks like this. And you have long textual directions explaining something that is a, a multimodal environment. It's images and content, and it's, and it's digitally rich. So those images, those screen captures, we can stack those up. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll have a long blog post, and I'll mix the text with uh, the images. So once again, one idea is a uh, screen capture. So I can be at New York Times. Uh, I will also do a lot of screen captures of how to read search engine results for working with students. So I'll grab Sketch. I'll take a snapshot. And you know I'll be working with an elementary school classroom. I'll take a snapshot and I'll say, you know, search terms here or not each. Okay, so I can mark up these pieces. I can use them as JPEGs. I can basically see each now. Um, I guess each was better. Uh, so these are screen captures. These are looking at your computer screen, getting images, marking them up, annotate them, and use those images for later. And it's a way to scaffold student learning. But there's also another tool that I like to use. Um, and this is up there. I like to do screencasts. Okay, so screencasting is when you take, you make a video from your computer screen. Okay, and this is exactly what's happening when we look at the Khan Academy. What they're doing is they're basically creating movies, um, and then from those movies, then you can move to like that flipped classroom model. Okay, so the flipped classroom model isn't really anything special. What's happening is it was, I believe, science, middle school science teachers in Colorado said, you know what I can do? I can make movies of my lecture and share those out online so my students watch the lecture outside. Then when they come in face to face, I can have more hands on work. Okay? So screencast. The tool that I use, um, I've used numerous tools over the years. The tool that I use now is Screencast-O-Matic. Um, you, I believe that you have, do you have tools in house that will do it? Where's my tech group? Do they have in-house tools that they can use for screencasting? Not yet. Not yet. Um, Screencast-O-Matic works well. Um, Screencast-O-Matic is free. There is a pro version that's $15 a year. You do not need to pay for the pro version. The only thing that it'll do is it will um, limit you to a 15-minute video. Your video should not be longer than 15 minutes. A real screencast should only be I believe two, three minutes long max. Your kids are not watching longer. Most of the research says that when we send them those YouTube videos and other online videos, they are watching them, bless you, for about 10, 15 seconds. So I'm downloading the screen recorder from Screencast-O-Matic.
So what we're doing is we're creating a movie from what's happening on the screen. Okay? Um, it's the same idea behind the screen capture. The only thing that we're doing is we're adding the, the video and the motion and our, and our, uh, our think aloud. I will say that with the $15, I do pay the $15 for the remote, and what you do get are a lot of editing tools you want to add in, a lot of, uh, you want to splice and add in, add in um, words on top of some of the some add in. The other thing that you'll have with the, the one thing that I think is in the free version is they'll put a watermark on the bottom, and that annoys a lot of people. If you are interested in this, I would suggest you play with it for a while and then see if it works for you. So this is running right now. Okay, I had the opportunity to have just my screen or, or just my webcam. I can have both. So if you want like your little talking head in the bottom of the screen, uh, you're all lovely people. I look like this. So you, you don't need a serial killer on the bottom of your screen looking at you, uh, telling you what they think about language and literacy. So you can have both if you want to, but it's very easy to use. I have the mic. The mic is running now. If I hit record, it'll give me a countdown. It'll let me know that it's about to record, and now it's recording. Anything that's in that frame is now recording on my computer screen. So I can create a lecture and talk people through my PowerPoint. Um, what I'll often do is I'll, I'll give the students the PowerPoint, and then when class is over, I will go back to my office and record the lecture and get a video of that lecture. I put those videos up on YouTube, and then in class say, here's my PowerPoint on Google Presenter. Here is the YouTube video of me doing the lecture. So if you're not here, not a big deal. The lecture is there. If you miss something, if you're an English language learner, if you need support, if you're a student with special needs, you need support, the video is there. Okay, Go ahead and take a look at it. So now I click on the pause. I hit done. It'll give you the video. You can download it, uh, which is pretty pointless because it's a flash file, not really much to do with it. You can upload it to Screencast-O-Matic. They have a pretty decent hosting service, I put all my stuff on YouTube. Okay? I put my content, my videos on YouTube, I have access to it. YouTube embeds well, YouTube embeds, uh, and it links other places. What I do is if you're worried about people watching all of your lectures about whatever content, you can make the videos unlisted. So they're not public, they can't find them, but then they can embed in your pieces. So this is a recording now. A lecture and talk people through my so now I what I do in my classes is I will go into class I'll give students the PowerPoint I create a screencast sometimes I will do the screencast during class so I'll walk students through typically even in a session like today I'll record the screencast while we're talking through yes it'll capture the questions and everything else but then you know what resonates and what does not work so I record the video and then share that out with students. Sometimes I'll go back to my office and record it. I'll sit there for 20 minutes, record my lecture, put it up on YouTube, share with students. The nice thing is once you create that recording, then year after year in that class, I make that available for students. I link that video in. They can go in and listen to it or get caught up and use it at their leisure. Yeah. What class are you teaching where you use this in the classroom? I do pretty much all my classes. What's the subject matter of this class? Uh, this, what do, what class do I teach students how to do it, or what class do I do this process in? Oh. So any class that I teach, I do this. That doesn't tell me anything. Any class I teach, hell, I teach it accounting. No, no, it does tell you. No, what I teach is, what, what's the subject matter? I do ed psych, uh, I do uh, language and literacy, I do a lot of technology classes. So any class that I teach, I use these pieces. Um, and you actually teach that instead of the subject matter? No, no, no. That's a different question. So I'll use this when I'm rolling out the material to students, but I do teach students how to do this sort of stuff, and I do that in some of the technology classes I teach. So there's two frames. Like one is I do this for my students uh, in any class. So I'll have PowerPoints for lectures, and I'll record the lecture ahead or after, and I'll record the video and give them the video. But then for my students that I want to be able to do it, in the technology class that I'm teaching, I'll teach them how to do this, and I'll require that they do it. Thanks for clarifying that. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah, and, and it's both sides. Like, I want them to be able to do it, but then I also, at the same time, um, it's it's a resource for them. Do many of my kids watch it? That's another question. I mean, when I was teaching Ed Psych, I taught Ed Psych for four years. I taught it probably five times a year. 
and you know i i went back at some of my videos granted they're all unlisted so i'd see twenty thirty views over a couple years you know but the resource is there so yeah i have a friend at cal state status law yeah who has done this he uses a screencast about it he's recorded all his lectures and now he finds excuses to take students all over the globe and just tells his on-campus classes to watch the screencasts. What is he doing? What? What, what is he what, what, what I missed the last part. He's a hedonist. He's not there. He uses, oh. he uses education to have fun. So he's taking people. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm tip, right now I am teaching a class. It, no, go ahead. Well, um, uh, how far can you stretch this? Uh, he, he likes to take the folks for her team building in the Caribbean and uh, over to Spain and Italy and yeah. so forth, uh, hosting his classes yeah. on uh, on screencast. Wow. Can you guys switch over to the to the online part while we're asking questions? So, uh, uh, how far do you think you can go in terms of replacing yourself? with a screencast uh, I, before it becomes a little bit questionable. It becomes questionable. One of the jokes that we had about our advisor was he liked to be on his boat all the time. And once the Wi-Fi bandwidth was good enough, he would just virtually go into conferences, you know, not physically go. So like we've given talks where I'll, I'll virtually go in and it's scary because then this Ming the Merciless head is up on a projector screen in front, like talking to people. Um, I think, but then we get back to earlier questions that we had about what we gain and lose from that hybrid experience. We're so, currently running a class called Walk My World that has 600 or something people in it right now. Um, and it's it's all over, there's people on six different continents who walk my world. Um, so we've taken it pretty far. <laughs> I mean, the, the video well, part. Yeah, so I mean, the, the video part, I think that you can go far with the video part, but it depends on what your purposes are. Other question? I was just going to say it's useful for if this university has a small emergency or something like that, you yep. can keep the class going. But one of my questions was how far can you get from the microphone in your experience? Uh, the, if you're walking around during class. What I've used in the past is sometimes the mics on Macs and PCs are getting better, but we've noticed from research and stuff like that that what we'll sometimes buy is like a little cheap lav mic, like a lavalier mic, you know, and you can have a, a wire stretching over. I typically, if I'm doing it, I want to be five feet from it. My voice is pretty loud anyway, so I can usually pick it up. Um, now what I will typically do is if I'm teaching, I will record it, but typically what I'll do is I'll go afterwards, sit and just record the lecture part, you know, either ahead or at, or after class, record the lecture, make that available for the students. So I've done it in class and record it, but sometimes then student questions get in there and then it just expands the amount of time and then students aren't watching a 35 minute video. You know, maybe it's 15, 20 minutes, the lecture, the content, they'll get it, but so, I want to be cognizant of time and have opportunities for questions and answers. Uh, we're going to pull up the people that are here virtually, see what questions are out there. Um, other questions that we have in the room as we're pulling up the the, the outsiders, the virtual outsiders. Uh, they're all a little shy right now. They're shy now. So once again, this is where we started. What I'd like to see us do. Uh, this is not the, the, the beginning or end of this discussion. Uh, I'm here for you if you want to reach out, if you want to sit and talk and debrief for a little bit, uh, if you want to take time and, and talk to me, if you want to reach out and have more support, I'm here for you. Um, we have other opportunities. We're going to have like follow-up uh, hangouts at Skype, um, and that's fun because then I can virtually come back and we can really see what the difference is. Um, but my thinking is that you start to really figure out how to create digital copies of new stuff. And these are just two tools that I use because they're free or free-ish. Um, there are other tools that are out there. Start to build stuff, put it up online, let people check it out. Yeah. All right, so we have a question um, from somebody who does not have their face up online. 
she asked, can you mention again places to build your own space where you archive your materials? Yeah. So I use uh, one of the things that I also, in that technology class I was talking about, I had my students start the class, they build a blog. I use WordPress. I have my own WordPress site. I pay for domain hosting on it. But I, I recommend having a WordPress site. Have one space where you put all of your content. There are other spaces out there. Uh, Google Sites and Wikispaces is uh, free. It's not as rich and robust, but Google Sites and Wikispaces work. I use WordPress. My blog that you're looking at that's out there, I use WordPress. Um, there are other online tools. What people will also use, uh, my students will either use Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y, or they will use Wix. So Weebly is a free website builder. Uh, WordPress, sometimes people have a bad time with it because it's a little bit too technical at times, but Weebly works very easily. Um, and then if you really want to make it super easy, uh, Wix is out there. Wix is free. My students use Wix. It's pretty simple to drag and drop and make something that looks stunning. Um, but then it's limited because WordPress has the uh, extra feature. So my vote would be to start with WordPress. Yes. Yes. Are your screencasts closed captioned? I don't close caption them yet. Um, we're, uh, YouTube will uh, add in closed captioning to some pieces. Uh, I've been trying to figure out ways to add closed captioning to my screencasts. I've been also trying to figure out different ways to uh, make them available to uh, you know people that are not English learners, uh, to make it available to people that are English language learners. Um, so that's one of the things I have to build in. It's just cost. That's one of the issues that I'm having. Yeah. Um, a few minutes ago when you were talking, um, the gentleman over there, I'm sorry, I don't know his name, was talking about walking the world. Yeah. Um, a question came in when you were having that conversation. Why does it matter where you are as long as students can ask, access you or it? Say that again? They were talking about, I, I can't quite remember exactly what they were talking about. Um, oh. Uh, well, it was, well, the question was, does it really matter where you are if right. students have access to 24 7 you can, so we're saying maybe that, that got it, you know, maybe he's figured out the right gig because now he's taking experiential education, he's taking students to yeah. and other parts of the world while still man so he's getting the university to pay for his trip to Florence while he's getting paid to I, He's a hero. The, now. <laughs> the, the short answer might be no, it doesn't really matter. And so the challenge here is that we know that our universities are trying to get us to reach out to global audiences and find students elsewhere, but then it has to come back to, to good teaching and learning. That's one of the big issues that we're going to have. So it, it might not really matter where you are as long as people can reach you and have access to your stuff and you build it the right way. But then we're talking more about that time issue and the savviness with technology issue. Yeah? Do you mind if I throw you a curveball? Just go for it. <laughs> it's free okay, training. There is some research out there that uh, unless students can, can take what they learn online and apply it, yeah. in their lives or on their job within a relatively short period yeah. of time. Online learning is largely a, a matter of memorization. Mm -hmm. In terms of retention and transfer, it doesn't happen as much mm -hmm. uh, if, if any period of time is involved there. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know what your experiences are. Because uh, a, a lot of the, uh, uh, and I, I tested this in my class, um, uh, over the past uh, year or two, and they say we take we take online as a last resort. It's convenient. Mm -hmm. It fits into our schedules. Yes. We memorize. Yeah. We regurgitate, and we forget <laughs> unless they immediately apply. I think that's. On the job. I think it's the design of the course. I think it's the design of the program. Um, while we were on break, someone in this room said, "Like, yeah, I take online courses because it's easier." It's easier, it's more manageable, I don't have to show up, you know? And when you're saying to me that you had colleagues that would have like the two hours sit down at the video and let's have an online class, that I would, I would hate that class. Mm -hmm. I would blow up that class in evaluations. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's the design. The programs that I've had in the past, the one that I ran over at, at UNH, it was, it was teachers that were currently teaching and using the content in class. So it was built so, okay, it, 
And that was trying to make the application piece. Because I definitely recognize the fact that there is a lot of bad online. You know? But there's also, I, I think, you know, to steal what he said often is that, you know, good teaching is good teaching online or off. You know, that's the key component in all this. Make sure that we have good teaching and learning built in, and how are we reaching people? How are we making them accessible to others? And don't conflate online and being alone. Build in opportunities for your kids to apply that learning. It should never be watch my 40 minute screencast yeah. of my narrated PowerPoint, then go and do the online seven question quiz. Yes. Yeah, no, get them doing a project together. Get them, and online, like, even though I'm online, most of our campuses, even the commuters, I'll still do group work and they'll and say, why don't you have me face to face? Like just because the class is distributed doesn't mean that I can't get the bodies together for the project. One of the things that I'll also mention quickly is that a tool that I'll use is Vialogs. Vialogs comes out of Columbia. Um, one of the nice things is Vialogs, you can dump in video or a YouTube video into it and it will have a discussion thread built into the video. So to have timestamps of the video, so you say, here's my lecture, or here's this video, watch the video as a class, and I want you to have comments that are baked right into the video. And then students can see each other's dialogue. So then instead of just saying, watch the video, come over here and talk, you can have that threaded discussion built right into the video. So I use Vialogs a lot in my classroom, and all it is is it's taking that video feed and baking a, a threaded discussion right into it. Um, the kids have to go, these students have to go in and create accounts, do use Vialogs, but for the most part, it has worked well for me. And by well, what I mean is that in longer videos, I'll see students that will, will watch it longer and they'll have comments and questions baked later into that piece. So I use Vialogs a lot. It's another tool to start playing with if you're interested in these screencasts. It's 11.30 now, and uh, we promise to end the session at 11.30. Um, there is the evaluation. Please uh, do us a favor, uh, fill out the evaluation. We also have a sign-on list. Uh, please uh, sign on if you haven't done that uh, already. I would like us to appreciate our workshop presenter, I think he's done a fantastic job. Can you put your hands together for Dr. Thank you. It's all you. It's all you. Thank you, man. I'd also like us to show appreciation to uh, Dr. Carol Stewart and uh, Dr. Uh, Doris Marino. Uh, they did a lot of work putting this together, coordinating an event like this uh, is not uh, that easy. So can we please uh, show appreciation to Carol. Thank you all very much. Like he said, the discussion and conversation continues. We'll still have a lot of food uh, at the back. <laughs> and I'm here, I'm not leaving. If you want to grill, <laughs> let's talk. around let's... for some time if you would like to continue with the conversation. Again, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Feel free to stay, or Ian is available on a one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, or one-on-one. We'll be, we have a room until 2 o'clock. I prefer higher My favorite is no, I definitely, one of the things I had in there, it's some of the questions was what follow-up you need.